My name is Dr. Gretchen Hawley at The Missing Link, and I created this YouTube channel to help people with MS all over the world not only know exactly what exercises to do to help improve your MS symptoms, but also to educate you on all things MS. There has been new information about the coronavirus coming out at what seems like an hourly rate, but I wanted to come to you and give you the most updated information at this point so that you feel more comfortable and less anxious about the coronavirus and more educated on how it potentially could affect you based on what MS drugs you may or may not be taking. I'm first going to cover the symptoms of the coronavirus so we all know what to look out for, as well as risk factors, and then we're going to jump into what drugs you need to be on the lookout for that may increase your risk of having a more severe infection if you do get the virus. And then we're going to cover some things that you can do right now to reduce your risk. Common coronavirus symptoms are shortness of breath, coughing, and a fever. And for 80% of people who get this virus, it will just be a mild cold. But for 15% of people, they will need medical attention, and 5% will need intensive care. It's reported that these symptoms may go unnoticed for two to 14 days after being infected. And this is a little dangerous because if you don't know you have symptoms and you're out and about in this society and community, then you may be spreading it to other people. Risk factors for this virus include age, which would be under nine years old or over 60 years old. And every 10 years, every decade beyond 60, it's known to get exponentially worse. So if you're 70, 80, or 90, that's going to be much worse than the prior decade. Risk factors for this virus include age, which would be less than nine years old or older than 60 years old, as well as comorbid conditions. And I just want to point out that having multiple sclerosis does not increase your risk of catching the virus or increase the risk of you having a severe reaction to the virus. Multiple sclerosis does not actually lower your immunity, but some of the MS drugs do. So we're going to jump into that and which drugs you need to be on the lookout for. However, if you have more severe multiple sclerosis and it affects you in a way where maybe you can't cough or you can't take deep breaths or you can't exercise and move around very much, then you might be at a higher risk of having a more severe virus if you actually do get the virus. I'm going to break down the MS drugs and their potential risk of the COVID-19 virus by injections, pills, and infusions. We're gonna start with injections. Injections like Avonex, Copaxone, beta serons Plegrity, and Rebif work by modulating the immune system, but it doesn't lower your immune system. So these injections have been shown to not increase your risk of COVID-19. As you likely know, there are many pills that are released for multiple sclerosis as disease-modifying therapies, and they all work a little bit differently. The first that I want to point out is Albagio, and this one is shown again to not increase your risk of being able to fight the COVID-19 infection. Similarly, Tecfidera and Vumerity do not put you at a higher risk for being able to fight this infection. However, they do have a side effect of reducing your white blood cell count. And having a lower white blood cell count can potentially cause a more severe reaction and the inability to fight this disease and this virus better than if you weren't on this medication. So I would suggest talking to your doctors, your neurologist, any healthcare professional you're working with to first and foremost, see what your white blood cell count is. It might be fine, but if it is lower, it's worth having that conversation of what to do next, considering you being on this medication. Gelenia and Mazent are two other pills that are disease-modifying therapies for multiple sclerosis. These two pills work by moving white blood cells into the lymph nodes, and this may put you at a slightly higher risk for having difficulty fighting this infection. One of the newest drugs in the U.S. market for MS is Mavenclad, also known as cladribine. And with this medication, it reboots your system and therefore lowers your white blood cell count and lowers your immunity. With this pill, you take it once a day for five days, then nothing for the rest of the month, repeat that next month, then nothing for the rest of the year, and then you repeat it the following year, and then you're done. That's all you do for this medication. So with this medication and its response to COVID-19, the timing is everything. 
If you recently took your first dose, or maybe it's only been up to six months or so, then your immunity and white blood cell count might be lower. So call your doctors and see what that might be. If it's been a long time since you've had your last dose and maybe it's been over a year, likely your immunity and white blood cell count has been rebooted and built back up and you might not be at any higher risk for fighting this infection. So talk to your doctors, let them know what you are feeling, have them tell you what your white blood cell count is. And if you're about to take your next dose, or maybe you're thinking about starting this medication, it might be wise to have that discussion on if it's important to delay it or switch medications, or maybe the risks are not that high, so maybe you do still continue. But this is a conversation you need to have with your doctor. There are three disease-modifying therapies for multiple sclerosis that are in the form of infusions, Tysabri, Ocrevus, and Lemtrada. Tysabri has the lowest risk of having difficulty for you in fighting this infection. However, it does still lower the immune response, but only in your brain, not peripherally throughout your body, which is why this is the lowest risk. However, it does have the rebound phenomenon where if you stop cold turkey, your MS may come back way worse than it was before. So talk to your doctor about your MS and your Tysabri to see if it would be wise to continue, delay, or switch therapies. Ocrevus is a mild immunosuppressant, so it does suppress the immune system. However, it only selectively knocks out B cells and not T cells. So this medication does put you at slightly higher risk for being able to fight COVID-19, but it's not the worst. As with most of these other medications, it might be wise to talk to your doctor about your next infusion and see if it would be wise to delay the infusion or if you're thinking about starting it, potentially delaying or switching to a different DMT. Lemtrada is an infusion that you would have five days in a row, then nothing for the rest of the year. Then one year later, you would have this infusion again, three days in a row. And this medication does reboot your immune system in a way that it knocks out B and T cells. So this does increase your risk for being able to fight the infection. However, you should talk to your doctor about your specific medication because similar to Mavenclad, this is all about timing. If you just had this infusion or maybe it was within the last six months, then your immunity is likely lower because it takes about a year, maybe even a little bit more to increase and improve your immune response. So if it's been over a year, over two years, then you are likely okay because your immune system has been built back up. So talk to your doctor about your timing and see if this is something you might want to delay or consider a new DMT. While this disease is spreading like crazy and it might seem like it is out of our control, there are actually several things that we can do that can significantly impact reducing the risk of all of us getting this and increasing your chances of staying healthy. The first one is washing your hands. Hopefully this is not new news to you, but this virus is spread via droplets. So if someone has the virus and they sneeze or cough and it gets on a surface, I've been told that it can stay on those surfaces for up to three days, which is a long time. So if you happen to touch that surface, then you may get COVID-19, especially if you touch the surface and touch your face. So washing your hands. And when you're washing your hands, making sure it's at least 20 seconds. There are so many good songs out there. First and foremost is the happy birthday song. There's Beyonce songs. So many songs that you can play and sing the chorus to in your head that are 20 seconds. But when you're washing your hands, it not only does it need to be 20 seconds, you have to be washing the fronts, the backs, inside the fingers, the fingernails, you want to be going everywhere and try to include your wrist. It doesn't need to be, and it shouldn't be, just getting soap on your hands and washing it off with the water. That does not clean your hands. Soap and water is best. However, if it is not available, then gel hand sanitizer can also be helpful. It should be greater than 60% alcohol base. Similar to washing your hands, you want to rub the hand sanitizer around until it is fully absorbed by your hands. Don't leave it nice and wet and shake it dry. Keep rubbing until it is fully absorbed. 
Secondly, do not touch your face. As I mentioned just before this, you are going to get the COVID-19 virus if those germs are on a surface and then you itch your face or you rub your eye or scratch your chin. So make sure you are being super aware to not touch your face. We all do this way more than what we actually realize. So try to keep your hands down, don't touch your face and stay healthy. Wiping down surfaces can also be hugely beneficial. Wiping things like door handles, sinks, countertops, keypads for computers, the mouse, anything, even if it's in your home, just consistently wiping things down multiple times throughout the day. Also, if you do have to cough or sneeze, make sure you're not doing it into your sleeve or into your shirt or anything like that, but keep a tissue on hand. If you sneeze or cough into your shirt, those particles of the virus can stay on your shirt for up to three days. So if you do that and then wipe your face or and then shake someone's hand and they touch your arm, whatever it might be, it can spread the virus. So if you do have to cough or sneeze, please remember to do so in a tissue or something that you can immediately throw out afterwards. Similarly, using a mask is not going to help prevent you from getting this virus, but if you have the virus, then using a mask can help you prevent from spreading it to anyone else. Lastly, social isolation is going to be key in helping prevent the continuous spread of this virus. So especially if you're feeling a little under the weather, stay home. But even if you aren't, you may have this virus for up to 14 days before having any symptoms. And in that time, if you are out and about, you're actually spreading this virus. So staying home, isolate yourselves to just your family and loved ones. They are also suggesting at this time that you try to stay six feet away from people. So if you do have to go to the grocery store or run errands for whatever reason, if you absolutely need to, try to stay at least six feet away, not only to protect yourself, but to protect other people as well. If you do all of these things consistently, washing your hands multiple times throughout the day, not touching your face, wiping down surfaces, staying away from people, you will significantly reduce your risk of getting the virus as well as potentially spreading it. One last thing I want to point out is the benefit of exercising during this time. The more you can exercise and keep up your immune response, keep up your strength, your balance, your flexibility, the better off you are going to be. With social isolation, at least where I am in Western New York, schools are closed indefinitely, gyms are closed, medical appointments are being canceled if it's not an absolute necessity. So there is a high risk that if you have MS and you're staying home, you are going to get weaker or have more falls because you won't be able to get to the gym or do your exercises. And therefore, in my attempt to make a small impact on the MS community, I am offering 50% off of my online MS wellness program for an entire two months, and it doesn't expire until April 30th. This is an online program that includes neuroplasticity MS specific exercises that you can do at home in your living room, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, anywhere. You don't have to leave your home and it's going to help you get stronger, improve your balance, improve your walking and improve your flexibility. We also have guest speakers from MS neurologists, occupational therapists, and tons of other MS experts, as well as research updates and activity specific exercises, where I show you things like how to climb stairs, how to get into bed and out of bed, how to stand up from a low surface and even sit down without plopping. If you're interested in learning more about it, check out the comment section below where I posted a behind the scenes video so you can see a sneak peek and get a sense on if this program would be a good fit for you or not. Most importantly, during this time, please reach out to your doctors, your neurologists, any of your healthcare professionals to discuss your specific strategy on what you're going to do with your DMTs, if anything, and stay positive, stay healthy, stay strong. I hope you enjoyed this video and please feel free to share it with a friend, press the subscribe button and press a thumbs up button. And if you do have a couple spare minutes, feel free to check out some of these exercise videos that you can do right now to keep up your strength and your endurance.